we need to have people of all races and colors standing up and showing that this is not okay. It's been a struggle for black people throughout the years and it is very scary. Like, we don't want sympathy, but we want empathy and understanding. A chance for us to live in the same manner as everybody else. So to feel safe, to not feel that we're at a disadvantage or that we have a target on our back. So right now the plan is 40 nights straight, right? 40 days straight. Um, that's to put pressure on the political process. Right now we're working with a group of people, Sparta, um, National Actual Network, a bunch of other organizations, the Life Youth Foundation, NICLU, and working on an ask. NICLU and a few other organizations have been putting ask together for over a year now since uh, we had an incident in Syracuse where a person got pulled out of the car. So we have good action items right now, use of force policy, transparency in the police department, a few other things that, are, that we're gonna meet about Monday and actually make a formal ask and we're not going to stop until those things are put in place. What do we want from the police department? And what will the funding police look like? Um, when, when you're looking at that and when you're looking at what do we want from police, um, I think it's just that we want accountability. And like you guys were saying with, with the body cameras here, um, you know, we want to be able to have accountability on both sides. The body cameras protect both the police and they protect both the people. And so when you have something like that, um, where both sides are accountable, then having that ability to to see what's happening. I mean, that's definitely what we want. Um, and we want to have neighborhoods that when you come into a, a neighborhood that's 90% African-American, that you have a police force that's representative of that neighborhood. Um, so to encourage more diversity amongst the police force and to, to go into um, different communities and to actually seek out people to apply to be police officers so that they can actually police these communities where there's people who look like them. And while that might not help with uh, all of the issues, that'll definitely stave off some of them. Uh, I, I'd say community policing as well. I mean, you know, just really getting in the, in the community and knowing these people for who who they are and not for the, the record they had 10, 15 years ago. You know, oftentimes you see someone who, who died at the hands of police, police, uh, police brutality. Uh, the first thing that is brought up, well, you know, this person had a record a mile long. And, okay, why does that matter? Why does that matter in this moment of, you know, we, we there, there's a law there's a system that's supposed to work you know you if you're arrested you, there's steps that are taken um but because this person has a record of mile long does it mean that that person d deserved to die at the hands of police on camera um so just really uh community policing and, and getting these police in the communities that they serve um and yeah having a more diverse like sam said uh police force, I think would, would, I don't know if it would change things, but I think it will definitely ease some tension because, you know, there's some rapport there. There's some understanding. There's some, there's some desire to, to, do th to do things better. Yeah. And specifically, so I live in Brooklyn in New York and the NYPD has roughly a $6 billion budget. Um, contrastly, other areas like hospitals have like half that. It is absolutely insane. I don't have all of the statistics ready, but it is, it's really, really staggering. And so the goal of the funding isn't to, you know, we're not trying to take away salaries of people. I think that that needs to be something that's very clear because there's a lot of misconceptions. The goal with defunding the police is essentially demilitarizing them and reinvesting that money in communities and poor communities that tend to be overwhelmingly filled with black and brown people um, and just lifting them up instead of over policing, you know, the best societies, I think this is about Jillian Johnson, you know, the safest communities don't have the most police, they have the most resources, you know, and over policing, policing in general, it's a band aid. And so like kind of an analogy I came up with, a band aid is a temporary fix, it's going to stop the problem. But if you don't know how to put on a band aid correctly, you can cause an infection and it could get worse. Um, and I think what we're seeing right now is that it's an infection. It's getting worse. And so how do we do that? We need more resources. Um, like why, and a great question to bring up too, why did we have full access to riot gear for all of LAPD and NYPD? But when 
a global pandemic hit, we didn't have masks, we didn't have respirators, we didn't have enough hospitals, enough, we, there wasn't enough room, we were, people were trying to turn people away. Um, and so that's a huge, huge issue, I think that we need to start talking about, because imagine, we already have a specific system where you can call 911, if your house is on fire, cops aren't going to show up, it's going to be the fire department. You know, if you call 911, because someone is having a heart attack, the fire department's not going to show up, it's going to be an EMT, you know, so we already have a system that allows for that specification. All we want to do by way of defunding it is reallocate those funds to make it even bigger. Because imagine if you were able to call 911. And if you know, you're having if someone's having an argument with their spouse, a social worker shows up who's got a degree in psychology and de escalation tactics, and then they can show up and then they can help with that. You know, if you call 911, because a child is feeling unsafe, there's a specific, you know, so it's talking about where that money people want it invested in. They want it taken out of the militarization of a police department and put back into the community in ways that will help to service everybody, kind of as you were speaking, Quindell, with community policing and just helping lift each other up. I think it's also important to make sure that cops are educated correctly. Um, at least in the state of Tennessee, there's really no requirements uh, beyond physical and a basic background check to become a police officer. Um, with a little research, it takes 1,500 hours to become a barber, and it takes roughly 700 to 800 hours to become a cop in the state of Tennessee. Those numbers don't seem right to me, um, that to cut hair, you need twice as many hours of experience than you do to hold a gun and to hold someone's life in your hands. Um, I don't know the financial impact of this, but I think it would be super beneficial if sociology and psychology classes were required of people who wanted to be police officers, at least on the basic level, a community college degree, something just beyond a high school diploma. Because mm -hmm. um, the police academy puts you through, from what I hear, mental training, but they might not do the best, or they might not teach the basic officers the things that they need. Um, mm -hmm. We're kind of seeing that with rubber bullets. Rubber bullets are supposed to be shot at the ground and they're shooting them at people's eyes and people's faces. So. I don't know if that's a, they weren't educated on that or they're so stressed in the moment that they don't know how to compartmentalize their feelings and they're shooting wildly because they're scared. I'm sure it's scary being a cop, but you know, 800 hours of training, you need to, you need to use your training. And I'm not a cop. I can't speak of the, on the police academy, but I feel like education for those people who are holding lives in their hands are very important. We think doctors go through so much training, pilots go through so much training, police need to go through that too. I was going to say, I kind of, I, I stumbled upon the, uh, uh, an article this morning that uh, I guess Camden, New Jersey has kind of already done this. Um, 10 years ago, they decided to defund and, you know, re reallocate their funds to basically dismantle the, the police department that they had and um, create a new one. And um, I guess in the 10 years that they've been doing this, they kind of restructured and retrained. Uh, they demilitarized uh, their police department. They, it's more community uh, policing, uh, more community relations. And uh, crime, according to the article that I read, is, is as low as, the lowest it's been in 50 years. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's, I don't know what the specifics are. Like, like I said, I just kind of, I skimmed it. I, I read a little bit about it and I was going to come back to it, but um, you know, Camden, New Jersey is, is, is doing this already and they're, they're seeing good results. So it, it can work, you know, mm -hmm. if, if, it's, if it's willing to, if we're willing to put, put into work, I guess. 